Hello, my stitching friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May McNaughton, and I am the lead designer behind the Cross Stitch Company Artist Design. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, I'm so happy you came back to spend a little bit of time with me as we talk about counted cross stitch and hashtag making all the things. <laughs> I am so happy to be here. My three-year-old styled me today. The lipstick shirt, Hello Kitty earrings, hair accessories, everything has been styled by my three-year-old. So let's see how this all works out. <laughs> I have, oh my gosh, okay, I have one finish to show you. I have my works in progress. I have some stash acquisitions. I Then I have some charts to show you I did a stash dive, which means I went through some of my collection and I dove down deep looking for some goodies and I found some stuff in honor of the hashtag Stitch Asia Stitching. So I wanted to just give some ideas and suggestions. I really believe in saving the stitches and that um, and sustainable stitching and what goes along with that is if you can find used charts that are licensed, not copies of not copies of charts, but legitimately used charts at the thrift store, being able to use them um, and then rehome them as you see fit. So um, the majority of my cross stitch collection is actually things that I have purchased from thrift stores, estate sales, and yard sales. And I have some yard sale goodies to show you too, if if we get there, <laughs> and that includes. Uh, finishing supplies and just some fun little things that I assumed you would all appreciate. So <laughs> we'll get started. Okay. Oh, I had a bunch of really positive and wonderful comments about my upcoming webcast with Sulky of America, which is on Tuesday, May 11th at 12 o'clock Eastern time. So that's noon Eastern time. So that would be what, 9 a.m. Pacific time and all the other time zones. I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't remember them all off the top of my head. So I am gonna be talking about this. If you are an experienced cross stitcher and you know how to do an eyelet stitch and you know how to do back stitching and all that stuff, I, <laughs> uh, you can always just, if you don't wanna join the webcast, if you just want the pattern, it's available digitally exclusively on Sulky's website and I have the link below. They also are carrying the kit which I helped them as far as sourcing all the materials. Sulky is a thread company and they do a lot of machine and quilting and all that stuff and they have gotten into the counted cross stitch game. There's the Carolyn Manning designs, there's thread packs for them. Kathy Hoberman of Hands On Design also has used their thread packs in the past. That's how I learned about Sulky in the first place, was by Hands On Design in, I wanna say 2019, with her market releases using the thread packs. So I love Sulky, and so if you wanted to get the kit, it comes with the pattern, it comes with the, the Ada, this is 16 count Ada, and it's the, Wichelt Country Mocha. So I just wanted to show you, it's it's a really nice Ada and that's what I used to stitch. This is my remnant piece. <laughs> from, so you get, you obviously you're not gonna get this exact piece, but Wichelt, they, <laughs> there's a piece of fabric from Wichelt. And then the, the spools of, of thread and then the Bowen Tapestry Needles. And I think they're, they're including like another like little freebie gift and stuff that they've that they've got over on their site. So again, I have the link below. If you'd like to join the webcast, if you are a new cross stitcher, I'm hoping to answer a lot of questions about how to stitch this piece because it uses metallic threads, which is their poly sparkle thread, which I love. I did a design called Peace on Earth using the poly sparkle threads. <laughs> it's a 30 weight thread but you can use it like two strands to stitch or you can add it with your 12 weight cotton and create a blend and then stitch with that so you get it's 
like DMC Etoile, but it's not. If that makes sense. It's, I like it. <laughs> so, uh, I'm hoping you join me. And if you don't, that's totally cool too. It's, 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 it is it's it's a free web webcast. So if you join, you do get this pattern. Woo! I developed this pattern for Sulky for free based on, or it's free to all who sign up. So this was my eagle motif here, uh, charted for cross stitch. It uses full crosses under and for the wings in um, the hot chocolate 4011, the brown. And then on top of that is the acrylic filling thread over the top there to give it some dimensionality. So here it's based loosely on that and it, the acrylic is for the, the whole eagle, except for the beak, is all in the acrylic 12 weight and then embroidered. And I know several cross stitchers, counted cross stitchers say, Amanda May, I don't do embroidery, I do counted thread. Well, I, I totally understand and respect that. So, but, you know, but some people who are just dipping their toes into the embroidery pond, pool, ocean, body of water, as it were, you know, are learning. And you know, why not, right? So if you do sign up, let me see if I can balance that. Oh, stay up, stay up, please. <laughs> okay. I follow some floss tubers that do the what's on my wall or what's behind me thread. So I wanted to just quickly touch base on what you might see behind me. I have covered some of this, but if you're new, I love, I do love to repeat myself. So. <laughs> okay, over here I've got a stack of finished, but not fully finished. So it's an F-O, a finished object, but not a fully finished object, F-F-O. Or finally effing over is what another person says <laughs> for the acronym. Anyway, up top here is the original Hmong section of an apron from uh, the Chinese Hmong culture. I adapted it for full counted cross stitch and it's on my Gumroad as a digital download and all the proceeds of that are going to the Hmong Cultural Center of Butte County. My first donation will be going uh, at the end of this month, which is April 30th, which is this Friday. So today is Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. <laughs> and I hope, uh, I hope it continues to generate some donations for that organization. And I hope you like it. Okay, what else is on my wall? This right here is Venice Poppy House sampler that I created. It uses a DMC variations thread or it's a colorist thread. So it's it's got very distinct color variegation throughout the skein of floss. And the title of that specific thread that I used to stitch the entire alphabet is called Venice, hence Venice Poppy House. So that is all charted in DMC. It's stitched on a light blue linen, but you could stitch it on Ada because Ada rocks too. And then I finished it against a, um, a mat board with a, here, I'll move the camera. Ready? I'm moving. It is finished with an upholstery fabrics linen sample that I got. And then it's attached to one of those vintage dust pans, you know, the sweeping things. So that's really cool. Okay, I've got Barbara Anna Designs back there, the light, and here, oh, I'm so excited about this. I am almost fully finished with this, almost. And here, I'll explain what I mean. Ooh, it's, it's difficult wearing my hair down during videos. Okay, let's see if I can do this. All right, I stitched this last year and finished it. This is, Blackbird Designs Yellow Submarine, and it's based off of the whole series. There's Strawberry Field Forever, uh, Yellow Submarine. There's a couple other Beatles songs, like the long. Anyway, you can go check them out. I have an idea list down. It's uh, Blackbird Design idea list 
on my Amazon influencer page and I list all a lot of the patterns. If you are interested in Blackbird designs and you've never heard about them before, again, there's so many new people joining Cross Stitch, the Cross Stitch Nation, yay! I assert it is not a hobby, it is a lifestyle. <laughs> okay, so blah, 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 let me rewind. This is stitched on a piece of 16, 18, I think it's 18 count. Can't even remember. I hand dyed it. <laughs> it's a blue that I dyed. I used a writ dye and dyed it and then I stitched it. And I just, I love it so much. I finished it and I say it's not fully done because I've hemmed and hawed over the last year on how to finish it. And I think I'm going to add ribbon and just have it where it can hang like here, you know, but it's got the ribbon so what I did is I haven't attached that yet. I folded over and then I've got a bunch of extra fabric because I didn't want to cut the fabric because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this finished or not. So I just, I have a piece of felt, just like the 39 cent felt that you get at craft stores. And then I whip stitched it. Yes, I did not do an invisible stitch. I know, but I did that. I left this pocket open. You can see all my extra fabric here. I did use the stitchery tape. This is a mat board, backing board. Some people are using right now the comic book boards, but I just wanna make sure it's acid free so it doesn't yellow over time. So stitchery tape, and I left this open. I haven't stitched it down in order to put the ribbon here, and then I will whip stitch and affix this all together. So this is my yellow submarine. I have it almost done. So there we go. And then, oh, here, this piece right here. Oh, let me pick up the camera again. Ready? Here, I'm moving you again. This piece right here with the little bee, the Stacey Nash bee waxer. This was the first ever piece that I stitched. It is a Shakespeare's peddler. And it was in her online magazine that I was published in. She put it out a couple years ago, Samplers Yesterday and Today zine. And I know I, she had it on her website for a while. I believe it's still there, like if you want the digital copy of it. So that was the first Shakespeare's Peddler thing I stitched. Then here is my sloth pattern and it's punched needle and I'm hoping to have it released pretty soon. <laughs> I love it. I used a combination of the Wonder fill thread so number eight count the number eight weight pearl cotton or eight weight cotton and then the 12 weight cotton from them and then I use the rest are 12 weight cotton from sulky I think he's so cute and this is that acrylic so it looks really you can fuzz it up and make it look like real fur I love it okay and then my cow punch needle and some other stuff. Oh, and this is my new piece that I released last week up here. And that is that my Hello Summer piece. Oh, and then back behind there, I've got some other goodies. Lots of, lots of stitching. My house is all about maximalism. <laughs> Add all the things. We are sitting in front of my husband's bookshelf. And so all of his Stephen King, Dean Koontz, and stuff is actually right here and all the all of my stuff actually is right here this is this is all cross stitch this whole bookshelf here and then this bookshelf someone asked me what I had behind here this top is all cookbooks and then these are miscellaneous craft books uh it, things from wood whittling wood carving to applique and quilting and all the things <laughs> so hey that was my what's behind me 15 minutes in thanks for hanging out okay I want to show you my finish. I'm giving myself a round of applause. It's in my little bag I made. One of the first bags I made. And I finished Barbara Anna's Lemon Cat. I did change it and added the eye, the eyebrow eyeshadow. I added that and I did do a couple little thread flippy flops, 
but for the most part, I would say 92% is true to the way it was charted. So I stitched this on a 32 count nougat fabric. I stitched it with two strands of floss from the DMC, uh, with the exception of I used one limited edition Gentle Art sampler thread, and it was a no name limited edition. So I can't tell you what it was, but it had a green hint to it that I didn't see late at night when I was stitching her face up. So she's got a little green tint to her, but oh, she's got a little thread on her too. I went ahead after I finished her, I sewed up this so I wouldn't have any uh, dangle threads and then I left dangle threads. Okay, so that limited edition, I put it right here and you can kind of see that greenish yellow tint here. So as charted lemons. And then instead of giving her black shoes, I gave her the green shoes. The green is accented in her bodice here and in the lemons. And I just love her. So I went ahead and gave myself a two and a half inch margin where I cut the fabric. And now I have a nice piece of fabric left. I'm thinking I'm going to stitch one of my sunflower samplers that I got, uh, the sunflower... One was gifted to me and one I purchased on line one, I think is a bright needle chart. And anyway, I'm thinking about doing the sunflower with the yellows and it could go with this piece, like on a wall, all my kind of yellow sunflowery summer things can kind of go together. I did not iron her, excuse me. She is a little disheveled. I watched a good video this weekend by Kitten Stitcher, Teresa Bennett. She discussed her 10 fabric tips. Go watch her channel, I'll link her below. I'm sorry, folks, while I'm talking, I, I'm gonna move my hair because it is too warm to wear it down. Okay, so she did a top 10 of her fabric tips and one of her tips was to, um, that you don't have to serge or stitch around your pieces. She doesn't have a lot of like thread loss and yardage and stuff from stitching or from not stitching around her piece or before she starts. That's awesome. I think that is so awesome that she can do that for me. I am a tactile person and I like to not have any of these little bits like come out while I'm stitching. But if that doesn't bother you, you don't need you don't need to sew around your piece before you begin. It is an extra step. It takes extra time. It presupposes that you have a sewing machine, that it's in working order, that you want to use it, that you have thread, and that you've got your bobbins. You know, there's a whole I I understand there's a whole series of steps to it just to start your piece. Again, for my tactile sensitivities, I like to do it. That doesn't mean you have to. Some companies will surge all around your large piece of fabric or small piece of fabric, depending on where you buy it. One, two, three stitch is an online needle workshop out of Utah. I get nine by 13, nine inch by 13 inch pieces of fabric from them and they, they sew all four corners. Coloring cotton, you buy a piece of fabric from them they don't sell nine by 13s. They sell larger pieces of fabric. They sew all around. So it depends on the company, the maker, the store, how it is going to be presented to you. Sometimes you will have one side that will ha have been sewn, but the way that the shop cuts the pieces off, the other three sides might be raw. So there's no rules in how to prepare or use your fabric. And so I don't want you all to think that I am trying to be preachy to you that you need to sew your corners down because you don't. It's just something that I like to do. Does that make sense? Okay, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with her, how I'm gonna finish her, but I have a finish. The next piece I have is my Blackbird piece and I finished my house. I built, I finished building my house this weekend. It was wonderful. This is out of the Tending the Garden book. This has punch needle, rug hooking, bouquet of quilts. They have a bunch of different things in here. I got this specifically for this pattern here. 
I have not decided if I'm going to do a date or a name below here. I might end up not doing that and just leaving it without anything. I made a mistake in my flower when I'm like three stitches off. So my flower clusters are a little off up here above. So putting a date in there, that might've been my cue or my, the sign, <laughs> I guess, that um, I don't need to put a date. So here we go. This is stitched on a piece of fabric by X Jude Design. She is out of Europe. I wanna say she's out of Hungary. And she has an Etsy shop and I think she wholesales for a couple of the online needlework stores as well. So I wanted to try her fabric out. It's a big piece of fabric. I have anxiety about cutting my fabric too soon. Yes, there are fabric calculators out there to help you calculate your margins. Yes, I have I used it recently? No, but they're there, they're there. Okay, here is my work in progress. So I was stitching along, I was watching a Hulu show. It's like People of Earth, I think it's called. Anyway, just like, <laughs> and I got over here and I, it, it, the, the, the stem goes along in one color and then it switches to another color green. Well, I forgot. So I, I took my needle down and I went to get the other color, forgetting that this one spot right here needed three stitches of that green, that second green, and then start the flower. Well, I ended up doing the whole flower before I realized I made a mistake. And I don't like frogging, which means to rip it, rip it. I don't like ripping things out. I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do that. So I went ahead and just added everything as is. Here you can see my three that I forgot to put in. I might add a blossom here or just kind of connect it down. I'm not sure. I got the house done and I got the lawn done. And yes, those are deliberate spaces in the lawn. That is as charted. I think I missed like one little spot here where I should have left an open space and ended up stitching it all the way across. It's fine, it's fine. So that is the lawn. I have these butterflies here. And so over here, there's gonna be not one nice big butterfly and this cluster comes right back down here. So again, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put a name or just finish the house with the flowers and call it a day. I am stitching this with a combination of Gentle Art Sampler Threads, GAST or GA, depending on how you look at it, and x -Jude Designs, and then I threw in another random just to help me get my color palette. So the purple is a limited edition, again, by Gentle Art. I don't know the name of it. And then the other ones are Halloween color from the Halloween color box by x -Jude. It's called like Saturday the 8th and Monday number two is, <laughs> I, oh, I love these luggage tags. This, uh, it is Kismet. Turn me on to these. I love them. I need to buy more, 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 more. Okay, one strand on 36 count. 36 count. I have a bone to pick with it. You ready for my, for my story? Okay. I have mostly stitched with 32 count as a, as a new cross stitcher. I have stitched with some 36 count and it's a weird headspace for me because it's right on that border between do you stitch with one strand of, of thread or floss or two strands? Well, that depends on the fabric and the company dyeing it. There's the term a tight, like tighter 36, meaning the dyeing process, if you get an over dyed, can shrink it. So instead of it being a 36, it, it actually stitches up like a 38 count, meaning 38 strands of linen per inch. So I started this project, which is in the magazine, just cross stitch. And it's Enjoy Summer. This was from last year's magazine. What? Yeah, August 2020. 
I started stitching this with two strands on 36 count hodgepodge of color and cotton DMC and Victorian motto sampler shop threads and this is on a 36 count smoke blue linen all right I have had a heck of a time with this this is my problem okay it's all with two strands and it's bulky and I'm having a really hard time getting into the groove of stitching it with two strands. It looks gorgeous. I mean, the dimensionality, everything looks good. Oh, and I found the 414 for my gray. So I finished my bird. I finished the little, but it's it's been so hard and it's slow to stitch because I'm, I feel like I'm dragging and pulling, trying to get those two threads here. So I was debating about trying the rest of the pattern, stitching it with one strand versus two. But the problem then is you're going to see the dimensionality change. And it's the, the thread, it'll look sparser, but I'll get the project done faster because I won't be struggling to pull through those two strands. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to just put this away and I'll think about it and what I want to do. Because I really enjoy stitching in hand, but not when I'm like, <sighs> and then trying to get your things to lay right because you're your stitches have scrunched. I've talked, I think I'm talking myself into doing one strand. <sighs> yeah, that sounds right. I'll get back to you. Tune in for, for updated reports. Okay. I got some friendly and lovely constructive comments about this Dimensions Red Angel that I adopted the project. I washed my fabric and started stitching where the previous stitcher had left off. She had passed away and I decided to finish her, her start. So I, last week I had the dress done and this week I finished the angel wings and the bird up here. I don't have a finished image to show you. Uh, someone sent me the Amazon link to this chart. It is of course, I didn't print it out. What is it? Dimensions Kit 6704, The Daydreaming Angel. So she's got her wings. And then she's got the bird here. So I have to go back through and backstitch the bird. And then there's some accents in her wings. And I need to give her a face. So her wings are really interesting. Looking at the model image on Amazon, the wings look white. But the wings are actually yellow and pink. So I thought that was really interesting. Yellow and pink wings. This is my first official like full angel that I've stitched. And I say stitched loosely because again, most of her dress was finished when I got her. I just added all the red ribbon accenting down here and the wings and then I have some more to do and then all the finished stitching. So I'm really happy with her. I'm happy that I have stuck with her, that I was able to rescue her. And then my last project for the week is the Ink Circles pattern. It's called Badgers from the Dawn of Memes. And I am so close to having this finished. Oh my gosh, love it. I'm using a combination of Silks For You, DMC, and, oh, just Silks For You and DMC. Okay, here we go. So I got the badgers. I'm working my way over and it looks like the snake is going to be the last thing that I do. I am using two strands on 32 count. So I'm really excited. This is a secret. It's a secret stitch for my husband for something, you know, the I love you days. It's every day I love him, but like anniversary or birthday or something, I'm thinking I'll give him that. And he doesn't really understand cross stitch. He'll ask me, he'll be like, oh, honey, what are you knitting today? I'm like, honey boo, I don't knit. It's called cross stitch. So, but it'll be in the house. So I'll enjoy it too. So anyway, it's going to be a gift. Okay. So those are my works in progress for the week. Hi. I wanted to show you my stash acquisitions. And a stash dive. 
stuff. And if we can get to it, the yard sale stuff. Okay, so I went through my stash and I found the chart that goes with this little Dimensions Cat Kit. <laughs> so I found that, I thought I, I had lost it. Then I went through and I found this and it made me think of Stitch Asia. This is a Design Works gift cross stitch greeting card number 834. And it just says thinking of you. So I had that kit. And then look what I got a long time ago. It is a Cherry Blossom Kathy Needlecraft watercolor accents. It's like a crowl embroidery piece. And I'm super excited about that. Uh, as you can see, it's got the floss. And I have never worked on a kit like this before. And can I open it live on camera? Yes. And it's it's has the design printed on the fabric. Produced by Kathy Needlecraft out of Connecticut. And so it's it's printed and then you just you you stitch over the existing spot the outlines and it tells you what the different stitches are satin fishbone french knot long tailed french knot so i was thinking that might be fun to work on again make all the things and then in my stash another thrift store 199 find i got it it was opened when i got it is this embroidery it's a freestyle embroidery kit by anchor and it's um, Vintage Peony is what it's titled. But it's really pretty and it's the same kind of idea. It's got, it's printed on cloth and it comes with all of the floss colors. So I know it's not counted cross stitch, but it is embroidery and Stitch Asia. And that's uh, Abby Bella Stitch. I will have her channel linked below as well because, because yeah. All right, so those are some of my stash dive things. And then I got some stash enhancements from the thrift store. I had to go to the chiropractor and then my car just like veered over. I'm already, I'm already masked up, you know? So I got this like ornament of the month, but it doesn't have the pattern, but it came with the, the little tart tin and the Ada. And it looks like whisper thread and floss. And then, oh, so it came in this bag. I, let me let me back up. It came in this bag and everything was already taped up. So I didn't know what was in here. But for $2, I'm going to get it. I saw the tart tin and then I saw this piece of banding. I'm like, I need this banding. Have I ever stitched on banding? No. Do I want to? Yes. So look at this banding. It's so pretty. It's got like this beautiful border accent. I don't know the company or the maker of this banding. There isn't a whole lot of it, but there's enough that if I wanted to try my tryout banding, it's there and I have the spools to try. So I got that piece. And then I got, it came with like a couple hardanger charts. I've never done hardanger, but I have quite a collection of them, including some of the like the, the religious uh, things that are made with Hardanger. What I did get, and this is what, okay, so I'm super excited about this. All right, y'all. I reached out a couple years ago to uh, Rainbow Gallery and they're a company out of California and they make, and they make pretty things, right? Well, they do not um, have sample books or any type of like if I was curious about their stuff I need to just buy it retail and try it out there's no samples for designers or anything which is fine totally fine but I got some rainbow gallery silk pearl number eight <coughs> to try and I'm so excited and it came with these little kit things no pattern but Twisted silk for fine count needlework and the little, these had to, yeah, April 1999 Hardanger Ornament of the Month Club. How cool is that? So I get to try the Rainbow Gallery Twisted Silk. I don't even know if they make the Twisted Silk anymore with their company, but I got some to try. Yes, 
two dollars and then I got a couple other things I want to show you because I couldn't help myself oh and this is a beaded sachet kit thing it came with the fluff and it had potpourri in it but it's from like 1983 mm -hmm. the potpourri got thrown away because it didn't look like potpourri anymore okay <laughs> but it came, it came with the the beads and everything all right let me show you non cross stitch but still cool I got Chinese brush painting because I want to make all the things I have never tried Chinese brush painting before and it's a complete kit for beginners and it came with all this stuff and the directions and stuff so it I want to try something out not cool would not be cool to make put a bird on it all right and this is so cool this made me think of Susie Reno she's a quilter and cross stitcher I will link her below she does a lot of English paper piecing stuff. I have never done any of that, but I got this. The thrift store was having half off sale and I saw this. This was marked, the thrift store had this marked for $3 and I got it for $1.50. Originally $90 and this is a Tula pink kit which I love Tula Pink. She has amazing designs. I've never purchased her stuff, but I watch her YouTube channel and find her amazing and inspirational as, as a designer goes, because she's prolific. Okay, so this is called Hex H-E-X on the beach. It looks like someone started this project and then they were like, Hex on the beach, my ASS, right? So I got, look at this. It came with the directions and then I got, it started getting pieced together. Someone has put in a valiant first start, but there's all, it comes with all the, it's got the paper hexes, which again, I've never done this before, but for a dollar fifty, I can sure try it, right? And it came with all the different hexagons, all in their little baggies. So I have to learn some stuff. Cross stitch. There's more cross stitch stuff. Oh my gosh. I have so much to show you all. I love cross stitch. I love cross stitch. And quilting and all the things. I, so the Oriole birds, I live in Maryland, which is in a mid Atlantic state. They like to say mid Atlantic state. So Pennsylvania is 45 minutes away from me north. The Mason-Dixon line is 45, 50 minutes away from me. I'm technically a southern state, but they don't like to consider Maryland a southern state. They call it a mid-Atlantic state. I'm like, okay, whatever. Okay. <laughs> but the state bird for Maryland is the Oriole. And I was going through my stash dive and I found this little one. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to stitch a little Oriole from a bird wall. So it's just the pattern. It is by... Uh, Graphique Needle Arts Limited, uh, designed by Linda Dubois, 1984. I showed you all that I finished my little ones last week. Oh, this is so cool. Designs by Gloria and Pat. Pat Carson, she makes the Pat's favorite needle. Well, she imports it from imports the needles from Japan she does not physically make them she she's the one that taught me how to stitch in hand yes I watched her on Facebook live from market I want to say it was 2017 teach everyone how to stitch in hand so I learned from Pat Carson not in person like not in real life but <laughs> so anyway okay I digress this is in 30 cents when this was published in 1982 and it's really cool it has the even weave computation charts linen dmc colors by family again from 1982 so it is dated but it's really cool and then it has um the dmc baits color and so even weave And anyway, it's just really cool. It's a really cool like information sheet to have. So yay, I have that. And then I thought you would all appreciate this. This is one of the, the bags that I got um, from the estate 
when I was gifted a bunch of stuff. This was one of the bags and it wild and wooly needlecraft. She kept it. I, I just had to show you. And oh my gosh, I have so much stuff to show you. Let's stick with cross stitch. We'll do a couple more minutes and then I'll have to skedaddle. Okay. Did I show you all the sentimental samplers? Homespun Elegance. She is prolific. She is still designing this. She's at Sandra Sullivan. She's out of Virginia, not too far from here. June Grig, the June Grig Sampler. This I thought was interesting. This is a time, no more delay. This is accept this is the acceptable day. Come in this moment as his call and live for him who died for all. Okay, so it's got that religious verse and it's got little windmills and that's got some fun motifs. So I got, I have that sampler and it's on one of those, the vintage cards, like where it folds up and out, nice big chart. I have the Needle Love Company Green Willow Sampler for all you who like stitching houses. I thought that was really cute. I liked the tree, how this tree is designed over there. Okay. Got a couple other house. Oh, for all of you stitching patriotic, I thought of, look at this little house. You could update the Obviously the finishing, you didn't wouldn't have to finish it like that, but look at that cute little house. And it's got the little laundry on it. This is Liberty House by Peggy White, leaflet 940 by Leisure Arts. I have schoolroom samplings, winter is past. This is a hand-drawn chart. I'm looking for the date. Um, this Victorian spring sampler originally stitched on perforated paper. So I don't know if you can see that. Looks like, it's cute. The Cricut Collection, another kind of patriotic samplings, little ones here. That's number 37. Of course, the Amish. I And the, I like the, the different seasons here. This, I thought this was cool. The miniature white work sampler. So it's got some of that hardanger, the white work stuff. And this is by Eileen Bennett, Elaine Bennett, the sampler house. West Coast sampler. I'm from California, so I saw this. I'm like, oh, that's precious. By June Greg. I got, found this. I these two. Yes thought of um, Pam, of Pam and stuff. Just keep stitching. She was stitching the Charles Wysocki. So I found this, the stores. This one is Charles Wysocki, Town and Country, book two. And then I got Winter 1890. That's not Charles Wysocki, but I thought that was really precious with the farm scenes and then this like gazebo but wait there's more I said two more minutes and here I am showing you more uh, Pennsylvania Dutch blessings and that is by Jenny Thompson original this one I had to buy I'm not gonna stitch this I should offer this as a giveaway I'm just gonna show you right now. So it's the two, <laughs> the cats in the basket and she's got the head and it's Amanda High. Amanda, another Amanda. So anyway, <laughs> Appalachian Sampler. That is an original by Studio M. Then this is Country Scenes by Graphique Needle Arts. Again, there's like the wagon and the horse and buggy. And then these are one of the, those cut through designs all through the house. 
a leaflet 189 by Gentle Arts. I, I know several people like doing these cut through houses, so I just wanted to show that. Americana by Alexa. These, these are hard to see and my doggies are barking, so I think they're gonna tell me it's time to skedaddle. Okay, Americana by Alexa. Sorry if I made everybody's things turn on. Sorry. Okay. Thank you for hanging out with me this week. I am so happy. Again, I'll have the links to the floss tubers I mentioned, the links, the ah, all the things down below. I have exceeded my 5,000 character limit on my YouTube subscription. So if I've think description, so if I've missed something, you can always email me. All right. Much love to you. Please know that you matter, your stitching matters, and that no one should take the joy of stitching away from you. Your backsides are awesome, and I mean that, like your cross stitch backsides and even your real backsides, because it's all about body positivity, inclusivity, and diversity over here. And with that, I say, love you, be safe, and stitch well.